This week, the Skeptic channel went over 10,000 subscribers. I'm blown away by all the likes and comments, and I feel like every day I learn a little more, which is great. I even learn from the theist comments. And guess what? To celebrate 10k, we're going to look at some of these comments from believers that have been left on Skeptic videos. Hello, I'm the Skeptic. I watch videos on YouTube that make extraordinary claims, whether that's evolution is fake or atheism is wrong, but mostly the claim that a god is real and then explain why I can't accept their position. Before we get into today's video, please do subscribe, hit that bell notification to be alerted for my next video and drop a like. That would be amazing. I didn't realise just how many comments I would start getting and I appreciate every single one of them, including the ones from Believers. Here are some of those comments, read by good friend of the channel, Apostate al Adin, who is just reading these comments and doesn't necessarily hold the same view. You can find Apostate al Adin's channel in the section below. You do not have a thought-provoking channel. You have no answers. There's two choices, evolution or God. If you deny there's a God, you will go to hell. Well, jumping straight in there, I never profess to have a thought-provoking channel. The views in these videos are merely my instant gut reaction to things I find a little strange. Surely evolution and God aren't the only two options. That's not a true dichotomy, and I'm not denying there's a God, I'm just not convinced of any gods. Nor am I convinced of a hell. Currently, the threat of hell is the same as you telling me I won't be getting any Easter eggs from the Easter Bunny, but thanks anyway. I don't believe that the narrator or any atheist is a skeptic. Being a skeptic means that you are truly open to being wrong and will change to your opponent's point of view when shown wrong. Atheists don't set up any kind of standard by which they say something to the effect, if you show me this specific thing then I will change. At best, they ask for general proof such as, show me proof. This is vague enough that it allows them to reject all evidence. The worst part about atheism is that they don't even have any way to offer positive proof that their views are true, even to themselves. They have to believe atheism by blind faith. They cannot prove their system on its own merits without resorting to negative attacks on God. Firstly, I just like the name. Secondly, in my case, it merely means I doubt certain opinions, unless it's absolutely clear one way or the other. Third, being offered proof that allows atheists to reject it isn't the fault of the atheist. Surely that's an issue with what's being offered. And lastly, you don't need to offer positive proof of not being convinced of a God. That's not a view. It's not being convinced. I'm not sure you understand how this works, Ron. Guys, guys, check this out. Check this out. I just had a thought. Atheists and Christians are 99% or more the same with regard to belief. I'm Christian and I only believe in my Protestant Christian God. I haven't been convinced that all the other gods claimed by all the other religions throughout history are real or even the other versions of God within my own faith. With respect to all those religions and sects of Christianity, aren't I an atheist? We really only disagree about one God. Think about it. Oh, Aaron... You're so very close. Maybe now take why you're not convinced of all those other gods and apply it to yours. If you're not convinced that Brahma is real, why is that? Saying you don't believe in God doesn't mean God doesn't exist. If there was a truck heading straight at me and I didn't believe it existed, would I get hit? Of course. God punishes all people and just by stating I do not believe in God doesn't take you out of the picture. But there is good news. You still have time to turn your life around and follow Muhammad. I mean... Jesus. Follow Jesus. I want all of you to turn and follow Jesus because I care about you. Repent and put your trust in Hashem. I mean, in Jesus. You won't see him, but you will feel the effect. When you read this, you will ignore it or say that I'm delusional, but I'm perfectly in my right mind. Can you demonstrate Jesus exists? The Quran is evidence that Muhammad existed. Sorry, sorry old habits die hard. The Bible is evidence that Jesus existed. The Bible never contradicts itself. So instead of having the mindset of, I won't believe the Bible until it's proven, it's better to believe in it until it's disproven, which will never happen. Oh dear, I love a circular argument, Mark. And by love, I mean detest severely. You can't use the thing that makes the claim to demonstrate the claim. That's just not how it works in everyday life. Belief in things until they're demonstrated to be false is backwards too. By that reckoning, you should believe in every single holy book and religion. Should the housemaid be convicted of murder until it's demonstrated she's innocent? And as for contradictions, well, there's a video that needs to happen on this channel. Wow, that circle is annoying. 
L. Best wishes to you. Sincerely, Black Wolf. Oh, thanks, Black Wolf. You too, I guess. We were created. Proof shows this to be greatly probable. The pre-man was genetically manipulated by gods, highly advanced humanoids, well, as noted by the gods in the Sumerian creation story. Clay of the earth was, as we would say a great ape or pre-man, genetically created by that of the sub-race, the Agigi, creating the Adipa. The Adipa was both Adam and Eve, male and female. This was the start of the common day humans. If you look, evolution has two million year space between pre-man and common day humans. Two million years of evolution that never happened. That why we have apes in our world to this day. In other words, if evolution, why monkey? What proof makes something highly probable? Surely proof demonstrates something to be the case. Is the proof this weird claim about advanced humanoids? I'm not entirely sure what an advanced humanoid is. And isn't the Adipa one mythical person? Not the Adipa. It just sounds like you're making stuff up again, Arnold. You're taking the holy word and adding fiction. Oh, sorry, I just slipped into some Book of Mormon musical there. I'm not entirely sure what you're saying here, Tech. That because there's dirt and apes, it's proof of modern humans being created. Really? I think there are some grave misunderstandings here. First, you seem to think that concerning the problem of evil, the Christian has the burden of proof. This is false. The burden of proof is upon the one making the argument, and in this case, the atheist is making the argument that God's nature is incompatible with the existence of evil. It is his burden to prove that, not the Christian's burden to disprove it. What you also don't seem to keep in mind is that these are short answers which are not rigorous. You can't give a two-minute answer to a question concerning biblical slavery and expect it to be inscrutable. These are just quick answers, which are the starting point of the conversation. This is a comment from a Ben Shapiro and Billy Street Crane, or whatever his name is, video, discussing atheist arguments about evil in the Bible and biblical slavery. I'm happy to admit if I'm wrong, but I don't think I have a misunderstanding when it comes to this. Though, regular commenter Thoron Nito said this. First off, no. I believe the grave misunderstanding is yours. The problem of evil is the evidence, not the claim. The claim is that there is a God that is literally defined as love and has the most power possible. The evidence, this is not the case, is that that being would be a contradiction. If it could fix everything with less effort than it takes to grow your own hair, fingernails, or skin, and holds within itself every characteristic of unconditional love it is possible to hold, then the world would hold no evil whatsoever. This is where the claim either dies or is supported. Craig's way of supporting this is to assert that I must give a reason why that God would have no justification for allowing suffering to happen. Thanks, though, Ron. Uh, Sorry if I butchered your name. And then there's the bit about biblical slavery. You shouldn't need to give a two-minute answer to any question about biblical slavery. It's actually very simple. Is or was it ever acceptable to own people as slaves or property? No. No. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, you're serious? No. No. Absolutely not. F- no. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go with no. No. Absolutely not. Absolutely f- not. No. No. Um. No. What? No. No. No, of course not. Why would you even want to do that? People are the worst. Oh, and slavery is bad, obviously, but people. <laughs> Absolutely bloody not. Ridiculous. There, I think that clears that up. Christianity is true. Cross. Tick. Cross. Atheism equals stupid falsity. Is Christianity true, though? There are many other religions that would say otherwise, and all would need to be demonstrated. And is it a falsity to not be convinced of something? I think it's stupid to suggest it is. Next. God came from something? Uh, no. God has always been. He had no beginning. Can you demonstrate that? Nope. I have to be as powerful as God, and well, I'm just a lowly human. If this turns out to be a many common session, may I ask your take on the creation, how the universe came to be? Do you believe the Big Bang Theory and the theory of evolution? Are you an atheist? Agnostic? I'm a believer, and I'm not here to defend God or the Bible. However... I will make it crystal clear as to what is written in it. This isn't what Darren says. This is what the Bible says. Oh, okay, Darren. If that's what the Bible says, I guess we have to accept it. Or do we? Once you've demonstrated it to be the word of a God, I guess I'll believe you. Until then, I'll just continue floating on this screen.
Yeah. <clears throat> but let me answer your questions. I don't know what you mean by creation, but I really dig the big bounce, big bang theory offering the best current explanation of why there is a universe. So I guess that means, yes, I do believe big bang theory and also the theory of evolution. Am I an atheist? Yes. Am I an agnostic? Also, yes. Did I get them right? Do I win a prize? One second. Let me put on my tinfoil hat. Evolution is fake. You can't prove Earth curve rotation or how gas would be next to a vacuum. No Big Bang, no evolution. Those dino bones? They're fake. Second law says space is fake. Mars? Forget about it. The moon? You mean that big circle of cheese? Come on. Think, sheeple think. Which second law is that, XVHK? You can't throw out all that rubbish and then just expect me to have a clue what you're saying. If gas couldn't be next to a vacuum, why does the atmosphere thin out as you travel closer to space? And Earth curvature is demonstrated so many ways. Ships sinking past the horizon is a great one. Also, I'm sorry you think evolution is fake. That's just a real shame. Anyway, next! The Bible has predicted so many things and never been proven wrong. It says today is the day of salvation. It isn't something you can fix once at the end. It needs to be addressed now. The Bible has been proven to be true. You deny this at your own peril. Read the Bible for yourself. Don't let others read it for you. What things specifically has the Bible predicted and never been proven wrong about? Just saying the Bible has been proven to be true isn't enough to convince me, so... Where do we go from here? I've actually been reading the Bible, though. It's not convincing me yet. Maybe I need to get to the juicy bits about God killing kids and all that stuff before I'm converted. As an atheist, why bother trying to be a good human? You borrow your moral foundation from another religion. Why even go through the effort of making all these videos trying to refute people that believe in creation? And yes, whatever you actually have as your worldview is a religion as well. If you don't believe so, then please, oh wise one, go ahead and prove it. You can start by answering the question, where did time, space, and matter come from? Instead of only asking questions, perhaps entertain us and answer some. Furthermore, God has given a solid reason to be mad, and you, dear sir, are toppling high scores. For your sake, I hope you are right in your beliefs. Hope to hear from you. Cheers. Which religion am I borrowing morals from? Huh. I had no idea. Where did time, space and matter come from? That actually has nothing to do with being an atheist. I don't know. I don't know how half of the lint in my belly button gets there. I hope that was an entertaining enough answer. I'm not trying to refute anyone in these videos. I'm just a regular floaty circle aided by a few friends and a rainbow giraffe called Lisa saying why some things sound a bit daft to me. Plus, it's good fun. How is God an extraordinary claim? It is extraordinary to think there is no God. In that case... Thank you for clarifying how extraordinary I am. Though, maybe I twisted that. To me, anything supernatural is an extraordinary claim. The end. Actually, it's not. Next! So, this is a 22-minute video responding to a 3-minute 40-second long video? LOL. See how things become more complex? R-O-T-F-L. Wow, easy on the acronyms, man. And it starts with this nonsense. What did a god make the earth out of? Well, ignorance is bliss for fools like this skeptic, right? Could one be more ignorant of the actual arguments? The Bible says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The above is a case in point. What do biblical creationists say? Well, they contend that we have two options. A. Either everything arose out of nothing by accident, despite all empirical observation and known laws of science. Or B. Something created everything from nothing, something which we would rightly call God. Strawmanning your opponent, not equal, sound reason, or honest skepticism, does it. Until you come up with positive, testable, and repeatable evidence for your God, you have nothing. Cite all the verses you like from your holy book of lies, but until you provide that evidence, you spouting empty rhetoric. Your religion relies on God of the gaps fallacies. Slotting your God into a gap in our knowledge, that isn't science. That is stupidity. You literally worship an old story, nothing more. If you think that you worship an actual real-life God, then ask it to show itself in our lifetime, and then I will worship it too. Until then, you are simply engaged in grown-up make-belief. Shh.
Sometimes I just watch how things unfold. Rampton Arse Candle, great name by the way, and Donny H seem to have this covered. I'll just drink my tea and move on. Skeptic. Don't read what other people have read about what folks have read in the Bible. Wow, that's a lot of reading. Me? Dude, I'm Christian and I could have told you that. Because doing so, you'll get a load of crap. I prefer proper research by scholars and theologians to apologists anyway. Demonic Remption is actually one of my favourite theist commenters. It almost seems as though they're on the edge of moving away from religion. So I'm just going to say here, keep asking questions, DR. We're all here for you if and when you step away from religion. You've got this. How would you have answered these comments? Add to the conversation as much as you like in the section below. I'm going to skip tick these off as dealt with for now. A massive thanks to Apostate Ala Adin for helping me out and for all the cameos in this video. Links to all the channels can be found below. And a big thank you to this month's ticks on Patreon, MISM, Addy Rock Art, The Enixes and the absolute lunatic Jimmy, as well as the base ticks. You can become a supporter on Patreon too at patreon.com slash the skeptic. The link is in the description, along with all the links to my other socials. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. From me, the skeptic, stay safe, keep thinking logically, and ask questions. Skepticism is the first step towards truth. I'll see you next Saturday.